I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I hope we all learned something today because you guys have been asking me to comment on this video uh, from Loose Transistor FPV, where he says capacitors are dead, long live diodes. Uh, and I say I hope we all learned something today because uh, this is a topic that I am certainly not an expert on. I know a thing or two about electronics and I know what a diode is, but I'm not an expert on circuit design. And if you're out there and you're an electrical engineer or a computer engineer who actually designs production stuff, I want to hear from you and see if you think the things he's saying and the things I'm saying are right or wrong down in the comments. But here are my thoughts about this since so many of you have asked what they are. In order to explain what a TVS diode is doing, I'm going to take this diagram straight from one of the white papers that he linked to in his video. So here's the diode, of course, and your protected load, that is your ESC. Uh, and this is your positive and your negative line. And so basically your ESC would be here and you would have your positive pad and your negative pad and, and this would be your ESC. Okay. And the diode is going to be installed across those two. And the idea is that when a big voltage spike comes in, what happens is that the TVS diode opens up after the voltage exceeds a, thir a certain threshold. And what happens then is that instead of this big inrush of current getting through to your protected device, what happens is that it gets shunted to ground and only a small amount actually gets through to your device. And so your voltage coming in, perhaps the voltage coming in might be 30 volts, but then when some of that voltage gets shunted to ground, now we've only got the whatever 18 volts that we really want to see. That's the idea. Now the assumption is that we've got a load, which is the ESC, that we want to protect and that the, the surge current or surge voltage is going to be coming in to damage the device. And that's not actually the assumption that holds in our case. So here we've got the positive line and we've got the negative line going to ground, okay? Uh, and a lot of the time, yes, current is flowing in to the ESC. The ESC is taking current and spinning the motor. But um, what about when the ESC breaks? Well, when the ESC breaks, current flows the other way, okay? And voltage is reversed. So what we could see, and we do see this when we put the ESC on an oscilloscope, what we would see is that the voltage, let's say we're talking 4S, so we'll just make a little mark here for 18 volts. And then as noise gets introduced into the system, we'll see that the voltage sometimes spikes high, but the voltage also sometimes spikes low. Okay, so this is some noise spikes. The voltage is going up and down. And when you take the TVS diode, the TVS diode is going to have a clamping voltage uh, when, whenever the voltage tries to go above whatever the clamping voltage is, let's say it's 22 volts, that's a value that he used in his, uh, in his, in his example. Whenever the voltage goes above 22 volts, then it, it's going to get shunted to ground and it's going to get cut off. So what will happen with this TVS diode is that all of this stuff will get clamped off, right? It'll get clamped off. Okay, fine. So we removed the harmful transients that could have damaged by damaged the equipment with over voltage, but we haven't actually gotten rid of most of the electrical noise. Uh, and that I think is the reason why I don't agree that capacitors are dead. Capacitors I think are not dead. Now let's talk about what a capacitor is going to do. So a way to think about a capacitor is that a capacitor is like a balloon on a pipe. Stay with me here. So here's a pipe, okay? And um, we're going to take and we're going to stick a balloon onto this pipe. And let's um, let's say that the balloon is empty. It's a flaccid balloon. <laughs> and we're going to push some water in. And when we push water in, and that's that's like electrical energy, electric charge. When we push water in, the balloon will fill up. It'll get bigger. But it'll be under pressure and it'll want to expel some of that water back into the pipe. And what's going to happen is that when there's a big inrush 
of water. Ooh, lots of pressure, lots of current. Some of that will flow into the balloon and fill up the balloon, and less will come out. And when there is a big outflow, so now we've got just a little bit of water coming in, and this is all full of water. Why is the water red? I don't know. It is. <laughs> we've got a little bit coming in and a lot going out. The, the balloon will, there will be a pressure differential across the balloon, and the balloon will let additional water flow out to make up for the difference. Okay? So basically what I'm getting at is that the capacitor is able to absorb electric charge regardless of which way the voltage is. It can both absorb additional electric charge or it can, it can disperse the electric charge into the circuit. And that's why a capacitor, and I wish I could go back to that other screen, but uh, but I can't. I have to redraw it. A capacitor acts as a low-pass filter. So if we go back to that other screen where we had the voltage, the voltage looked like this, right? What the capacitor is going to do is it's going to round off those edges. That's what a low-pass filter does, making it look something like that. Okay, and eventually, uh, as you filter more and more, you'll eventually end up just with a flat line. That's a very, very filtered, maybe an excessively filtered, who knows, depending on your application. But the point is that the capacitor is not doing what the TVS diode did, where the TVS diode just chopped off the top, right? The capacitor is rounding off the whole thing. So I think there is a place for a TVS diode in our copters, uh, and that place is protecting equipment from transients, which is the entire purpose, protecting equipment from over-voltage situations. Uh, but I don't think that you could make the argument that you should use just a TVS diode and no capacitors because of the the way that our, because we're not just trying to deal with transients when we have these problems with noise. Okay, I hope that was educational. I hope I was right. Uh, please comment in the comments if I've gotten anything horribly wrong. And please, you guys, read the comments. I'll pin a comment to the top if I think anybody points out something that I've gotten wrong. But I, I feel like this is basically correct. And uh, well, I guess we'll find out. Happy flying.